Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Tennis Talk. Today's episode is going to be short and sweet. Uh, I'm going to have a guest in just for the quiz. And before that, I just wanted to run through some tennis books that I am recommending. Um, I think a lot of us are probably feeling a bit of a void in our lives if we, if we play a lot of tennis. And I reread some of these books today and it was it was a nice moment. I felt kind of definitely forgot about the coronavirus for a few hours and in a way it's kind of let me reconnect with tennis, I suppose. Um, so there's obviously tons of autobiographies out there. The best one, probably one of the best sports memoirs ever written is Open by Andre Agassi. And I'd say most of you have probably read it, but if you haven't, check it out. It's it's an incredible read. And another one, Serious by John McEnroe. Um, McEnroe, his character just comes out and it's, 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 it's entertaining. Um, what I haven't read, but I read some reviews about it today, Maria, uh, Maria Sharapova's Unstoppable. Um, and I didn't know that she, with her father, went to Florida when she was very young with very little money and was able to turn that into a, a remarkable career. And she is apparently very frank about her issues over the last few years. Uh, another great book, maybe more geared towards coaches and competitive players, is Total Tennis Training by Chuck Creasy, an old coach of mine. Um, and it's very good on, on momentum and, and, and match play. And, and if you're involved in organizing any teams, um, squads or anything, it's, it's a lot of good kind of anecdotes and pointers there as well. Uh, one book I, I highly recommend is called The Inner Game of Tennis by Timothy Galway. Um, essentially, that is a book about teaching the reader how to how to play tennis in, in the zone, as we call it, um, and forget about external factors and results and um, expectations of others. And the great thing about that book is you can apply it to, to any sport, music, personal life. Uh, There's just some valuable life lessons in terms of one's attitude towards um, a sport or, or whatever business, whatever it may be. Um, and the book I would recommend over, over any of these, to be honest, is a book called String Theory by American author David Foster Wallace. Now, Foster Wallace is he's highly, highly intelligent, very witty, very insightful and not afraid to speak his mind uh, on any thing or any person in tennis. Um, and his ability to describe players physically. Um, I don't know if, you, if you've ever tried to really just describe a point you've seen properly. Um, he, he's actually able to do it. He, he kind of brings you into the moment. He, he writes some of the articles almost from um, uh, the Arthur Ashe Stadium in, in the US Open and he, he pretty much transports you there. He's, he's incredibly descriptive. Um, and I was reading it today and I, I came across one paragraph that, paragraph that I think kind of exemplifies uh, a little bit about what I'm talking about. He, not only was he one of the best authors probably we've ever come across, but he was also a competitive junior tennis player. Uh, so the first article is about his experience growing up as a teenager, competing, etc. And he, this, for example, he's talking about his peers, the other teenagers, and how they used to go ballistic playing in the in the wind and take take you know default negative attitudes towards it. So instead of saying, oh, the other kids used to get really annoyed when it was windy, um, this is how he writes. The best planned, best hit ball often just flew out of bounds. It was a basic, unlyrical problem. It drove some kids near mad with the caprice and unfairness of it all. And on real windy days, these kids, usually with talent out the bazoo, would have their first apoplectic racket-throwing tantrum in about the match's third game and lapse into a kind of sullen coma by the end of the first set now bitterly expecting to get screwed over by wind, net, tape, sun, etc. Uh, so you kind of might, might get the idea there. Um, but yeah, David Foster Wallace, string, string Theory, I definitely available in hard copy, and I presume on Kindles and downloadable, etc. Um, yeah, so I will 
try and patch in my guest now. Okay, guys, we are joined by budding tennis superstar, Billy Brennan. Hey, Billy. Hello. How's it going? Good. Are you getting to play any tennis? Um, yeah, I'm going to play against the back one in my garden. Okay. And tell us, what, what age are you, Billy? I'm 10. 10. And who's your favourite tennis player? Probably Monfils or Diminor. Oh, I see. I see. Not Federer, Nadal or Djokovic, no? No. No, okay. And uh, I presume you're doing lots of chores and helping out around the house? Yeah. I, ha I don't have too much homework, so whenever I'm finished, my mum calls me. Oh, to get, to, get, to get you to do some stuff? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so are you ready to play Champ Breaker? Yeah. Okay, so in last place is me on two points, and there's a couple of people on seven points. So, okay. Okay, so question one. Name three different types of Wilson tennis racket. Um, there is blade, yeah. there is pro staff, and there is, I think, class. Good man. One out of one. Question two, what city is the US Open held in or played in? New York. Two out of two. I hope these aren't too easy. Um, question three, what was the score in the final set of Wimbledon, Wimbledon last year between Federer and Djokovic? Pardon? What, what was the score in the final set between Federer and Djokovic in the Wimbledon final last year? So, Was it 8-7? No, thirteen, twelve. Oh. Still on, still on two, still on two. Um, what is Andy Murray's mum's name? Oh, Judy. Yeah, three. Um, how many seconds is a player allowed between points? They have the, you know, the the shot clock. Yeah, twenty-five. Good man, four. Um. What is Serena Williams' sister's name? Venus. Oh my goodness, you're gonna, you're cruising. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what color racket did Roger Federer use in, in the last Labour Cup? Blue. He, he did indeed. Um, next question, where is Simona Halep from? Next question. The old tennis player, John McEnroe, is famous for saying something to an umpire. He said, you cannot be something. Serious. Good man, good man. Um, next question. Nadal has a, a logo that's on his shoes and his t-shirts. Um, what animal does it come from? Bull. Good man. I think you... I've gone into the lead on eight. Good man, Billy. Good man. Thanks. Good stuff. Thank okay. you. Okay, we'll see you when you get back to Dublin. We'll get you out for a bash. Yeah. Good man. Good man, Billy. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. In the lead. Thank you. See you now. And that was Billy Brennan, who is now in the lead. See you, folks.